It's a great pleasure to be here speaking to the college on its history in the early years and its movement towards the present. The American College of Allergists, as it was originally called, the ACA, was officially incorporated in November the 23rd, 1942, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it was established under the direction of Fred Wittich, an allergist. The following year, in Kansas City, they established the Board of Regents, the leadership, the Articles of Incorporation, the mission statement, and so it was that this organization began. It was a group of dedicated individuals interested on focusing on the patient and an extreme degree of collegiality amongst members, friendliness, respect for others, a concern also for training. There were no training programs at that time, and several of the leaders spoke about that. A paucity of medications to treat patients, but a strong desire of good people to do something good for ultimately the patient whom we serve. During the 50s, several of our leaders of the college focused on the importance of introducing allergy in medical schools and also for postgraduate allergy training. When I went to medical school from 1927 to 1931, we had one lecture on asthma, one lecture on asthma. That's how much they thought of allergy. President Moore, in his address, spoke to the obligation as allergists and allergy actually infiltrating every field of medicine. And also he and others focused on education of trainees, individual young people entering the field. And of course the college has maintained a fidelity to that over the years and we do much for our trainees and our training directors. The 1960s saw the continued movement of uh, the goals of establishing a mechanism for certification. It brought together many, many individuals, towering figures of the college, and also of the AACIA. And one of these figures was one of our past presidents, Dr. Philip Gottlieb, who played an important role in raising the professional status of the allergist. He was actually the one responsible for doing the paperwork for establishing a section of the AMA on allergy, and that became extremely important. It sailed through with uh, no dissenting votes at all, unanimous. And the Board of Trustees of the AMA thereupon made me the chairman pro tem of the allergy section. And I think in uh, a very true sense, this was the first real recognition of the specialty of allergy. So the story of um, movement towards certification continued, and what came out of it was the Sherman Resolution, which was established by the AMA. This was an important move towards certification during the 60s, and I must say to the credit of the college, this dream was eventually realized. One of the great scientific discoveries during this period of the 60s was the discovery of the IgE and its clinical applications, which are immense. This one discovery in the 60s, I think, was one of the great contributions that changed the face of allergy. It moved our educational programs, our training programs, our work towards certification even further. I think we could say that the 70s represented the continued growth of the specialty and the I think the signal, single most uh, important contribution was the establishment of the American Board of Allergy and Immunology in 1972, the first uh, examination in 1974. I was examined by Dr. Milton Cohen, and he told me at the time, at the completion of the oral examination, that it was to have been the first to be certified in allergy by examination. Also, in the 70s, a new concept came out, a new drug for the treatment of allergic disease, which was a uh, beta-2 agonist, and also the important introduction of the Joint Council of Allergy and Immunology, which was also introduced in 1974. It was established through the creative efforts of two of our past presidents, 
Dr. Robert Becker and Dr. Aronson. They foresaw that there would be problems with medical economics and, and uh, the physician reimbursement because the country, the country was going into medical economic disaster. Uh, costs were increasing. There were no restraints on billing and uh, services offered. And they foresaw the need for an organization that could represent the political voice of the organization. It was a very prescient and uh, forward-looking contribution. The 1980s represent a very important change in the direction of the college, both from the uh, substantive uh, programs of the college, but also the administrative support. I think the movement of the administration to Illinois was one of the most important contributions that Dr. Barkin made, and it has caused an immense growth and development of the college. And for that, we're eternally grateful to Dr. Barkin and also, of course, to the administration. The other events that were significant were the contributions of Dr. Boggs in the amalgamation of the two uh, AACIA and the college. The AACIA had accomplished their goals. We had achieved certification. There was a new board, so there was really no reason for their existence. And that group was very compatible with the college, so the amalgamation was very easy. And we changed the name of the college from the American College of Allergists, ACA, to the ACAI, American College of Allergy and Immunology. During the 80s, in addition to the beta-2 agonists that had been developed in the 70s, we saw the introduction of the inhaled steroids for allergic rhinitis and for asthma. And I think a recognition that asthma was no longer simply a bronchoconstrictive disease, but also involved a second phase of inflammation and uh, so our knowledge of treatment improved greatly in, in this uh, period. The 1990s represented an important decade where we established a mechanism to fund the foundation through the fundraising, annual fundraising events, the proceeds of which for that first event went to inner city asthma. We established um, greater recognition of the field of immunotherapy and the uh, meter dose uh, problem. We continued the research and educational programs, and finally, we stabilized the fiscal stability of the college. Diane Schuler, she was the first female president. She added the A to the name of the organization, asthma. In most hospitals, um, allergists don't see patients with asthma, but they're increasing in that regard. So the addition of the word asthma to the name uh, was an attempt to highlight that the importance of the allergist. The introduction of different ordered antihistamines was an important contribution. Many of the older antihistamines had the unfortunate side effect of drowsiness, and several new classes of antihistamines were introduced. The other thing we mentioned for the 90s, the continued uh, development of the steroids, the local nasal steroids and the inhaled steroids. I think we could say that the 90s uh, focused on continued um, membership rec uh, recruitment, promoting research and educational support, and really the beginnings of a mechanism to fund the foundation through these fundraising events. I think the 21st century has brought in some very interesting contributions and advances, plus some challenges. We began, for example, with Dr. Bardana with international global programs, and they also introduced the Allergy Watch, which was a great contribution of education. I think the contribution of Dr. Gowers and the Find Relief campaign that was in instituted during his presidency was noteworthy. The establishment of an advocacy group to replace the Joint Council, which I think shows the leadership of the college in these socioeconomic issues that were formerly handled by the JCAI. 
The last, I think, and most significant uh, advance in the college was Vision 2020. This is a program that was established in 2014 and projected the programs and goals for the next six years until we reach the year 2020. That has been extremely important. So in summary, I think we could say that in the 75 year history of the college, we have seen the greatness of our forefathers in describing and establishing a beautiful organization of people that care for one another. An organization that is concerned ultimately with the patient whom we serve. An organization that is concerned with young fellows in training, giving them opportunities, giving them funding, giving them educational opportunities. These were all articulated in the original articles of incorporation of our forefathers. The establishment of a foundation was also described in that early document, and this has been fulfilled. So I am so happy to say and pleased, and it brings joy to me, to say that the college leadership has maintained a fidelity to all of those programs that our forefathers established. And I see a very bright future for the field, and I uh, would encourage all of our membership, our fellows, our members, our associated uh, societies, to take some great joy in uh, celebrating the 75th anniversary of accomplishment of this great organization. Thank you.